Let's move on. 21 minutes past eight here this morning. Uh, coming up, uh, we, I'll give you the sports bulletin first. The IOC president, Thomas Bach, says he fully understands why the Tokyo Games would have to be scrapped if the event can't be held next year due to the crisis. The Games are obviously pushed back a year in March. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has said that the event cannot, said the event cannot take place in 2021 unless the virus is contained. In an interview with the BBC, Bach said he understood the view of the Japanese government, but he also said the IOC were committed to holding the Games next year. They have to be prepared for various scenarios, including athletes going into quarantine. In football, the League of Ireland clubs could find out about a potential return date later on when the FAI steering group meets again. Thoman Park could be used as a venue for Games when the season resumes. The Aviva, Tala Stadium and Athlone are also in line to stage Games while FAI headquarters in Abbottstown has been earmarked for first division matches. FAI medical director Dr Alan Byrne says games can only take place when there is an acceptable level of risk. Premier League matches could be televised free to air following productive discussions between the government and football's authorities. Sky and BT obviously hold the rights to screen the remaining top flight fixtures this season, but with matches set to resume behind closed doors, Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden believes ending the 3pm Saturday blackout gives them room to negotiate. Meanwhile, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp is optimistic the Premier League will be able to resume next month after a squad returned to training in small groups yesterday for the first time since football was postponed in March. Amateur boxing in Ireland is facing a, ma a massive crisis after two clubs were made homeless in the last 48 hours. St Teresa's and Bray say the premises that they've been using was sold without them being informed and Tullo and Carlo have also been left seeking a new home after a rent freeze was denied. Here's what's coming up for you. We're going to speak with uh, Mary O'Connor from the Federation of Irish Sport around about 8.35 this morning. Um, they've made a call for a resilience fund to help clubs like the uh, boxing club in Tullow and Carlow and like St. Teresa's and Bray. Uh, these are obviously very important aspects of social architecture um, that kind of bond society together and so they're asking for a bit of help for that and uh, Michael Check and Andrew Mertens are the guests this week on Keith Wood's State of the Union which is coming your way after 9 o'clock. So at 8.23, we'll bring you the papers. OCB AM. Uh, Offtheball.com, a national scandal, the Bradford Fire, 35 years on. Daniel Taylor was on last night talking about the uh, Bradford Fire, which is uh, just one of those horrific tragedies in um, English football with a lot of very unanswered questions, a lot of un unanswered questions still uh, very relevant 35 years on for the families of that. And uh, the worst feeling I've ever had Jordy Murphy talked about his World Cup dropping. Danny Rose on mental health and how managers can make a difference. Uh, amateur boxing facing crisis is two clubs in 24 hours homeless and tributes paid as ex-WWE star Shad Gaspard dies trying to say son. A terrible story from um, the last week where his son was uh, essentially rescued by Coast Guards just at the very last second. Um, a riptide uh, came along and carried Shad Gaspard away and they discovered his body yesterday. So that's what's on offtheball.com for you this morning if you want to get your sports fix. The Irish Independent this morning leads with a picture there of Jurgen Klopp back at the Liverpool training ground. It's like the first day of school, he says. Reddit's boss says squad is in good spirits as Watford star shocked by positive tests. That is uh, Adrian Mariapia, who was fairly surprised, I think, to say the least, when he got his positive test for coronavirus. Also, sports data company to examine GAA contact time. So this is the newly based company behind the player proximity white paper that provides detail of contact between Premier League players ahead of a return to training this week. Hopes to soon be in a position to provide similar information to GAA clients. So this is Stats Sports, and they've been showing data for Premier League clubs where players are in the personal space of other players for a percentage of time that is actually less than people expected. And crucially, it is less than health experts advise is required for COVID-19 to be passed from person to person. They don't claim for it to be an exact science. They're just saying it's a guideline, but it's very interesting. And of course, there is the fact here that the GEA and the way Gaelic Games is played, there is far more man marking. There is far more possibility for people to be within the personal space of another player for far longer than in football. So it's interesting and it's a newly based company involved in all of this from the Premier League's uh, point of view. The Irish Times, um, their lead is Autumn Six Nations could cap busy seven test Irish schedule. So this is the return to play August 22nd, Leinster Munster at the Aviva could herald a hectic spell of games and they've got a list here. There's Gavin Comiskey's story, um, Leinster Munster on August 21st, Ulster Connacht on the 23rd, and then Interpros the next week, Leinster Ulster, and then 
Uh, they're looking at a Pro 14 final on the 17th of September, followed by Champions Cup semi-finals, and then the 3rd of October, Ireland, Italy, and uh, Pro 14 starts again, and then France, Ireland the following week, Champions Cup final the week after that, and then uh, hopefully a Six Nations in October, uh, November and December, which will be pretty exciting. I think we would all be very excited by the fact that um, you'd have a lot of rugby between uh, the end of August and Christmas, if it can happen. Dave Hannigan's got an interesting um, column today, How a Hoodlum and Murderer Gained Control of Boxing. Just better read you the first paragraph of this. The czar of boxing did not have an office. Frankie Carbo preferred to conduct business at his favourite table in the garden cafeteria just across 8th Avenue from Madison Square Garden. Promoters, managers, trainers and fighters made daily pilgrimage there to genuflect before this grey-haired, mild-mannered gentleman as he sipped his coffee. And then he goes on to tell you about uh, Carbo potentially being the trigger man who offered Bugsy Siegel a seat as... Sorry. Who offered Bugsy Siegel as he sat on a couch in a... Sorry. The word is oft, not offered. So you know Bugsy Siegel from the, um, the movie and uh, Carbo is the guy who was suspected to be his murderer and obviously uh, goes on to become a very important person, a senior figure in uh, global boxing. And then I'll see Munster then unlikely to re recruit a replacement for Tyler Blaindell is uh, the other story there. The terrible news yesterday that Tyler Blaindell had to retire. The London Times this morning leads with the story about Watford. Worried stars stay away, they say, as Watford train. So several members of Watford's squad have refused to attend the club's first training session because of the safety fears ahead of the Premier League's planned restart next season. They lead with a photograph of Mo Salah back in training for Liverpool. They've got a constant stream of information on whether or not saliva will be used on balls or not in cricket on the back of uh, the Times. And this morning's headline is saliva ban will hurt spinners. Meanwhile, air Saturday games for free is a quote, which is the headline of Matt Lawton's piece. The government increasing pressure on the Premier League to make some matches free to air, possibly on Saturday afternoons. So it could be potentially on Sky Sports or BT's YouTube channel, for example. The Irish Examiner, uh, club players who don't feel safe, free not to train. And then picture Tyler Blendall, a tough decision, but the right decision, Blendall bows out. This is a significant neck injury that he's had over the last while. And they also have comments from Ron Nogara saying he's unbelievably well respected in New Zealand and at 29 he is a coach in waiting. So uh, he may immediately join the Munster coaching tickets. Um, the Irish Times are reporting that they won't be replacing him just yet. That they actually they have a couple of young kids coming up who are very good out house at the age of 20 who we might get to see some game time for in the next while. The Irish Mirror this morning. How did this happen? is the headline on the Mariapa story. He says, I don't party, I rarely go out, just go for a walk with the kids. Ever since I got the result, I've been scratching my head. Ulster Ace Murphy, meanwhile, is backing a restart at the Aviva. This is Jordy Murphy, who of course was on the show last night, who's backing plans to return to competitive action in behind closed doors games at the Aviva Stadium. And new kid on the cop is Jurgen Klopp and the headline on that story, because he said yesterday felt like his first day back at school. The uh, Irish Sun, Back page there is uh, Barry is secret Swindon backer. He lent agent pal who bought club shares 800 grand. Uh, and then the other one here is uh, the subheadline Waterford owner power and 800 grand loan claim. So um, this is a Gareth Barry somehow involved in helping to bail out Swindon, which is apparently against FA rules. So um, I'm sure you'll hear more about that story. Our balls are sticky is the headline. The Premier League's big return to training has been hampered by sticky balls. It's football zone, get your mind out of the gutter. Some players have angrily slammed the Phase 1 COVID-19 training programmes as pointless and ludicrous. All 20 top flight, top flight clubs have now resumed work, but uh, the disinfectant that is being sprayed on the balls has reacted to the hot weather, causing the surface to become tacky and affecting movement. Don't spray your balls with disinfectant. Good for goalkeepers, sticky balls. Yeah. Back page of the Irish Daily Star is Why Me? Watford ace Mariapa baffled by coronavirus positive test. It's a touch of class for Klopp, who's back in school, as I've mentioned. Player grief, a real issue, meanwhile. Uh, this is Paul Keane writing that leading performance psychologist Tony O'Gregan says the current COVID-19 shutdown has plunged some players into grief. He talks about the association, the deep association between footballers and hurlers. 
and their sport. They see themselves as hurlers. They see themselves as, as footballers. And to have that taken away for a prolonged period of time obviously causes a, a whole range of mental health issues. And also Charlton to swoop for Troy. Charlton will renew their interest in teammate Jarlin striker Troy Parrott next season. Um, the Telegraph next. Back page of the Telegraph there is Mary Appleman with shock at positive test. We've just done that story. Plead to save British Grand Prix by easing quarantine, which is, it seems to me the exact same story as yesterday, but no, it says Thursday, the 21st of May on that one. Uh, ITV presents 1.5 million bill for lost national. Hotel isolation plan requires law change. So um, all those plans are still being worked on. And uh, Serge Aurier got his hair cut. Not supposed to get your hair cut. Faces a uh, significant fine for that. The Guardian this morning leads with a photograph of Mo Salah back in training. Look who's back. Salah and Liverpool squad return to training before possible restart. Staying at home, several Watford players miss training amid COVID-19 fears. That is the headline on the latest news from Watford and the Premier League. And Formula One plans eight European races to start season. And the... Uh, da, 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 what's next for me is the Herald. The Herald this morning is um, essentially that story that uh, Colin Keyes had about stat sports um, and how the GA are going to be able to use some of the data from some of the teams who use uh, stat sports um, to get at least a sense of how often players are in contact with each other during training and matches. And uh, during first day back at school, Liverpool boss puts on his uniform again for training. The Irish news finally from me, Belfast and Glasgow Celtic link offers new pathway to paradise. That's a story on uh, both of the Celtic teams there. And Coney says counties must wait their turn after resumption. That's Kyle Coney saying club football must come first in the return to play in Gaelic games. The last one is the mail and it's Kante opt out. So this is uh, Chelsea star won't train due to virus fears. Chelsea star N'Golo Kante opted out of phase one training yesterday due to his concerns. There's a picture of Mo Salah back at training. And Blaine Al poised for a move into coaching. Um, you'd hope that he'd be able to stick around. Uh, Monster head coach Johan van Graham has confirmed he is looking to add another coach to his backroom team. And Blaine Al could be a prime candidate to fill that vacant role. Um, obviously, you never really want to see anybody end their career like this. But uh, given the severity of the injuries, um, it seems like it was the, the right time for him to call time on that. So let's move on because it's uh, 34 minutes past eight this morning and uh, Aviva, Ireland's largest insurer, are marking the 10-year anniversary of the official opening of the Aviva Stadium and its proud long-term sponsorship of the iconic venue. To celebrate this milestone, Aviva are paying tribute to some of the most iconic sporting memories of the past decade. You can join in yourself. You can follow Aviva Ireland on Instagram and Twitter and share your favourite Aviva Stadium memories using the hashtag safe to dream Now, the people of Sligo mobilised yesterday. I think League of Ireland fans mobilised yesterday and we had a bit of a surprise, but not really that much of a shock. A bit of a surprise. Kieran Kelly, who uh, saved four penalties in a row, we spoke to him about all four of them on the show um, about 24 hours ago, and Shane Long's goal against Germany is out. Kevin Caban reckoned that Shane Long's goal against Germany was one of the biggest goals in the history of Irish football, and it has been beaten by um, four successive penalties being saved by the Sligo Rovers goalkeeper a decade ago, which is, in fairness, you know, a fairly amazing thing. Um, but certainly the good people of Sligo and I think the League of Ireland fans were out in force. The second semi-final is live right now. This is pinned on our Twitter account. It's uh, Jonathan Walters against Bosnia, against Shawnee Maguire against Dundalk. So, uh, could we have an all League of Ireland final? We could. If the League of Ireland fans get out now and start voting for Shawnee Maguire against Dundalk, it'll be Shawnee Maguire versus Kieran Kelly. But I would suspect that nothing's going to stop Kieran Kelly. The Sligo Rovers juggernaut is on the road and it's in convoy and they're not stopping until they get to the Aviva. No, there's a, once a momentum starts in social media, it is hard to derail it. And like you said, a momentum doesn't matter, Jar. Look at these polls and read us and weep. It is a real thing. The scientists who sat down and said, this is the formula for momentum will be looking at Kieran Kelly polls and saying, Proof. Right, we're going to talk the future of Irish sport with Mary O'Connor of the Federation of Irish Sport next on this morning's OTBM. First though, let's hear from Lawrence Donegan. Here he is talking with Joe last night about uh, Roy McElroy and Donald Trump. Have a listen. 